Um, typically this morning, we have a pew full of preschoolers. And so this morning, uh, this morning's homily will be specifically to our preschool and also all those who are watching. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We miss you here in church. It's totally strange to be looking out and not seeing anyone other than the five people who are here to celebrate. And so I thought today I would try and answer three questions that we might be asking. The first question is, why are we serving liturgy without people? The second question is, how is it still important? And I would say even more than important, it is essential that we continue to serve the Divine Liturgy in times like this. And how can you participate even though you're not here? So first, let me start with the first question. How can we have a Divine Liturgy without people? Technically, we can't. So we actually do have people here. There are five people, the priest, someone helping in the altar, and then three chanters who are all here to be here on your behalf. So because you can't be here, someone has to be here because the liturgy, even though this is a pre-sanctified liturgy, the liturgy is all about bringing an offering to God and receiving that offering and taking it back out into the world. The real work of the divine liturgy is connection. It's connecting us with the divine. It's not about a transformation of bread and blood into the body, body and blood of Christ, I'm sorry, bread and wine. Even more important than that is the transformation that happens when we connect with Christ, which leads us to a really difficult thing. How can we receive the body and blood of Christ if we can't come? And the hard answer is, we can't. And that's a challenge. So during these times when we can't be together, we have to find connection with our Lord in other ways in other ways that we already do in the service, right? We pray. There's five forms of prayer that we practice. Does anyone remember what those are? Doxology. That's how we open the Divine Liturgy. That's when we give God praise. Petition. That's when we ask God for things. That's when we ask for health, for mercy, for salvation. This is a perfect time to do our own petitions at home, to sit around as a family and to ask God for specific things things that are for healing and health and our salvation. Then we move on to another form of prayer that we might not think of as prayer, reading Holy Scripture. Holy Scripture is a part of bringing God's Word into our heart. If prayer is a conversation and we're always asking God for things, well, we also need to be listening to what He's taught us because a conversation has two sides. And then after that, we move on to repentance. Right before we receive Holy Communion, we ask each other for forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, forgive me the sinner. And that's how we prepare for the Kingdom of Heaven. That's how we prepare to receive Jesus into our bodies and making our bodies a temple. And then finally, we have prayers of thanksgiving. Like we've said in the past, Thea Eucharistia, Holy Eucharist, literally means thanksgiving. And so we leave the church grateful for this connection that we have with Christ. Well, this morning, those of us who are here who have received are able to physically receive and go out into the world. But you who are at home, you can still receive by doing a couple of important things. Remember, the main point of the Divine Liturgy is to sanctify the world, which is the answer to question number two. Why are we still doing liturgies if only five people can be here? The truth is, the Orthodox Church is not alive if there's no Divine Liturgy. The Divine Liturgy is the blood of the Orthodox Church. It's what keeps us a Church, because the work of the Church and the work of the Liturgy is to sanctify the world. So even though you're not here, we are still sanctifying the world. We are still praying for the world. We are still doing the work of the congregation, even though the congregation can't be here. So it's very important that that's what you focus on at home as well. Remember, sanctify like saintly, means to make something holy. A holy person or a saint is someone that does God's will. And so we can continue to do God's will even outside of the physical walls of the church and continue that progress. And so finally, how can you participate even if you're not here? Well, number one, 
I know you're already doing it by saying morning prayers with Mrs. Ruses and myself and Presbyteria and all the other teachers that are hosting morning prayers every day. So that's wonderful. Keeping up with us during morning prayers is great. Number two, today at 11 o'clock, so in about an hour, we will be handing out andidro and holy water on the front steps of our church. So if you'd like to come and get some andidro, you can come that way Sunday when you're home with your families watching the service, you can take a little sip of the holy water at the beginning of the service or maybe around Holy Communion time. It's not a substitute, but it's the next best thing. And you can eat some andidro at the end and we will all be joined through eating of the 500 pieces of andidro that Father Alexi cut for us. So those are some ways that we can continue to physically stay in touch with the church. Now, virtually, we can stay in touch with each other just like you've been doing. We can continue to call each other. We can continue to pray at home and also with each other. And we really need to pray that this ends quickly so that as soon as we can, we can be all back together at church and in school and continue this work of sanctification. We love you. We miss you. And we hope to see you very soon. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. And now I'll ask if the chanters can please finish with the closing psalms.